Hey guys and welcome! So, today, once again, we're back with the drama. DICE released the roadmap for Battlefield 5 and everyone is claiming that Premium was a better option. Alright, maybe not everyone, but at this point there is so many people claiming that Premium was a much better choice for Battlefield series that... I'm not even sure if the same people who were complaining about Premium in the first place aren't now complaining about the live service and that everything is free, so... Yeah, there's that. So, today we're gonna take a look at the roadmap, compare it to Premium, although it can't really be compared one-to-one, -one, cause roadmap isn't precise. Premium was precise. We, we knew what we are getting. I mean, naturally, at the time of us having Premium announced, we didn't know, but now we do know what we received in the Premium package, and it's quite hard to compare it to the roadmap, which doesn't really reveal all of the secrets and precise information, so yeah, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it somehow. Generally, the first thing that we will say is that in the first 5 months of Battlefield 5 being out, we will only receive 2, 2, I mean 2, literally 2, new maps, which not necessarily has to be true. According to the roadmap, which you guys can see on the screen right now and I'm looking at, so I'm not looking towards the camera, basically, in the first chapter, in December, between December and January, we will get new location. Then, in March, we will also get a new location, but that's, that's not the point. We don't know if those locations are in fact a single map, or if it's a DLC bundle. Now, DLC isn't the best term, because it's all a live service, but you guys get the point. The point is, alright, it might be called Location Belgium, but we might get four new maps from Belgium. We don't know how many maps are included in one location. That's the whole point. He will think it's only one map. Doesn't necessarily have to be. Of course, I know everyone is concerned after Star Wars Battlefront 2 and their live service, but... I'm still optimistic, it's not gonna be that terrible. The second thing we will talk about the most is that... In December, we're actually gonna be receiving content which should have been implemented to the game in the first place. The core game, especially after it's been released. Especially after it's not been released and delayed for a month. Right? And that's where I agree. Because... Stuff like Practice Range, which we are getting in December, although it's about two weeks after the game comes out still, it should be the core part of the game, not the live service content. Even though it's free, even though it will be added for everyone, you don't have to pay anything, it still should be a core gameplay thing. It should be in the game, you should be able to test out weapons, vehicle at the Practice Range from day one. It shouldn't be extra content. And the same thing goes for the vehicle customization. As much as I like what DICE is doing with Battlefield 5, they shouldn't be implementing customization to the whole section of the game later after launch. Especially that they announced it in May. Back in May, they said, hey guys, you will be able to customize your tank. Now we have to wait till December, especially after the game has been delayed for a month. I would kind of understand if it's been in October and they said we need more time to implement it, but if they delayed the game for a month, I don't think it's quite right to delay a couple of core parts of the game and then implementing it as extra content. But, 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 the point of the video was, how does it compare to premium? And if you ask me personally, I think that it compares quite good, although, although, I don't know what will be the end result. I don't know if those locations mean one map, two maps, five maps, because even if they mean two maps, then it's decent, but if they mean one, it's terrible compared to Battlefield 4, where in December we received four new maps for the game which came out in October, and by January, or Excuse me, by February, because the Naval Strike DLC has been delayed because of the console problems. If I'm correct, it was PS4. We had already 8 new maps in the game by February. How does that compare to Battlefield 5? 
And please don't compare it to Battlefield 1, because everyone has been complaining about the DLC release cycle for Battlefield 1, so... I don't think we should bring it up as an example, because we should compare it to something we liked, not something we disliked, and then we are happy that they improved something we didn't like in the first place, because it was a downgrade compared to the previous game. It shouldn't be like this. We should be comparing it to Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 3, where we actually enjoyed the release schedule for the DLCs. As I said at the beginning of the video, we can't exactly compare it to Premium 1 to 1, because this roadmap, even if they and DICE call it a top level roadmap, which it's not, it's not a top level roadmap, let's not fool ourselves, we don't really have any exact things here. We don't have specifics, we don't know how many weapons they will be implementing, we don't know anything about gadgets, we don't know anything about specific content. We just know general approach. Tank battles Belgium. What does it mean? Will we get new tanks? If the whole DLC or map pack is focused around tank battles? We don't know this. And we know all of the things that have been added previously with premium passes. So comparing it one to one isn't really fair at this point. I'm gonna do a comparison when premium, excuse me, not premium, but when the actual roadmap drops with specific content and then I'll be able to fairly compare it to premium where we can see, are we getting less content, are we getting more content, are we getting more weapons, more gadgets, less gadgets, less weapons. We're gonna be able to compare all of it and see the actual difference. For now, we still don't know anything. Da is releasing some graphic and blog post with general information. That's not really a top level roadmap as they are labeling it, but yeah. But all in all, I'm quite positive towards the roadmap, even though it's not really that specific and giving us all of the details. I'm still looking forward to DICE executing on it and actually implementing all of those things to the game. I wish they would mention something about competitive, because after all, there's been all of this incursions, testing, and a big competitive thing at Gamescom last year, and they've been quiet for a year pretty much. So, yeah, I wish they would say something about that, if it's happening, if it's not happening, can I play competitively, can I not play competitively, but I guess we'll see. Anyway guys, let me know down in the comments, what do you think about roadmap, do you like it, do you not like it, what do you think? And as always, if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and I see you on the battlefield, see ya!